is the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to delve into the pages. Uh, we'll pay attention to the front pages of our national dailies. And uh, we have our guest on standby. He joins us via Zoom, Chris Kane Wandu. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. All right, then. Uh, we hope that we sort that out before we uh, have him on board. We'll start off with the Nation newspaper. And on the Nation, uh, the caption might just be the same as orders. Presidential ticket, Buhari disowns Adamu over Lawan. Uh, you remember all of that that's going on. Some people have described it as confusion. Uh, we can't wait to share the thoughts of Chris Kende. President Buhari has picked Senator Ahmed Lawan as his choice. That's what Adamu Abdullahi is quoted to say. Uh, away from that, we have reaffirmed our position on power shift to the south to the president. Northern governors are quoted. Another writer says, there shall be no imposition of any candidate. Nobody will appoint anybody, the president is quoted to say. We are with the governors on power shift. Chairman is entitled to his opinion on Lawan. You have the National Working Committee. So a different uh, position, that of the chairman, the Northern Governors Forum, including the uh, Southern Governors. Uh, you also have Buhari and the National Working Committee. Nigeria Air gears up to begin operation. And uh, just before we move away from uh, the nation newspaper this morning, another interesting caption. Terrorists operated for 30 minutes at our church. Survivors re recount. It's a very sad one. My 70-year-old mom shot dead. Please recover unexploded bomb. Tunubu tipped to win APC presidential race. This is what the nation is quoted to say. But that's so much we can take this morning on the nation newspaper. Let's go to the punch newspaper with these headlines. Uh, APC presidential ticket. Adamo's consensus plot fails. 21 aspirants in battle royale. The following writers to that headline. Seven NWC members reject Lawan. Tinubu or Shibajo, fire me others who delegates. Seven NWC members reject Lawan. Tinubu or Shibajo, fire me others who delegates. Presidency rubbishes Tinubu's claim of helping Buhari win. Namani steps down. That's another Southeast candidate gone, or aspirant rather. I won't impose anyone delegates to elect APC candidate, says Buhari. Uh, right. Um, at the top of that front page, COVID-19, others delay aircraft acquisition for national carrier. This is according to CEO, details on page 17. Our massacre, survivors, victims, relatives, grown as can NGF protest. Our massacre, survivors, victims, re survivors, victims, relatives, grown as can NGF protest. Uh, crude oil exports jump 194%, hit 5.6 trillion naira in three months. So, hurrah. Varsity Unions, FG, renegotiation panel sitting ends today. So hopefully, we have some good news from there. Forex crisis, FDI crashes by 78% in three months. E payment, Nigerians' utility bill spending soars by 300 and 87 percent protesting workers shut down national assembly lawmakers postpone resumption and pictures of those uh, protests going on in abuja marking the contested pdp governorship primary alone defeated himself this is coming from <laughs> one of the aspirants uh, bola rumi saying that um, Lesson teacher bags life imprisonment for impregnating 14-year-old pupil. That's a really sad. I didn't see PDP let delegates list until day of primary. Dele Momodu. Um, well, the more you look, the less you see. <laughs> he, he says he didn't see the PDP delegates list until the day of primary. And some of the things we see going on as far as politics of the day is concerned. Only 44% of Nigerians have access to smartphones. This is according to a report cited by The Punch. And these are some of the headlines on the front page of that newspaper. All right, then. Let's uh, move on.
move away from the punch and take a look at the Daily Independent newspaper. Presidential primary APC splits over Lawan as consensus candidate. Northern governors insist on power shift to south to decide voting pattern today at convention. Presidency says Buhari has no preferred candidate. It's Sage once again filing a nodiner. Right as you find underneath the bold caption, uh, that's on the Daily Independent. You have another saying, you alone did not make me president. Buhari replies, Tunubu. Hmm. Interesting. Atiku in Dilemma as PDP shops for vice presidential candidate. Should that be a problem? Vi Federal government delays airport concession to twerk operational model. I take that again. Federal government delays operational uh, concession to tweak operational model. Labor vows to counter plan gives condition. 15 abducted in Anambra as soldiers. Please battle gunmen one nabbed. And former APC National Secretary Akpanudoe Dege dumps party. Ondo bloodbath. While trying to escape, I saw dead bodies on ground. Uh, this is an account of those who survived the unfortunate incident and attack that happened in uh, St. Francis Catholic Church. But these are the headlines on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Let's turn our attention now to leadership newspaper. Um, of course, they say they write stories for God and country. Uh, let's see how that is shown in the headlines. The first one, a big one there, uh, 2,000 and 2,340 APC delegates to decide presidential flag bearer today. Uh, the writers to that story as PMB throws contest open, rules out imposition, says, I have no anointed candidate. Adamu's bid to impose Lawan fails, NWC disowns national chairman. South fails to reach consensus. Aspirants go for broke. Northern governors insist on partial. This, I think, is one of the best ways that paper, any paper has put it this morning. Uh, they are going for broke. All right. Um, still from the leadership, Lagos Oando partner on electric mass transit buses. Let's see how that works. Uh, no one can claim PMB's 2015 electoral victory presidency. The picture of Garba Shehu right there beside the word presidency. Four years after unveiling, Nigeria Air gets operational license or attack rekindles clamor for over, overhaul of security architecture is another one from the leadership. Lockdown party, Boris Johnson survives confidence vote. Kola Biola wins PRP, presidential ticket. And bandits abduct over 20 persons in Zamfara. Of course, um, some of the analysis from that paper with the numbers uh, and the figures as far as um, the APC presidential uh, primary is concerned. You can get more inside that newspaper. All right, let's have uh, Chris Kane want to share his thoughts this morning on the papers. Good morning, nice to have me. Nice being here. All right, Dan. Uh, so, so let's start off with it. Uh, we take a look at the Nation newspaper, which was uh, the first uh, paper we looked at. Presidential ticket, Buhari disowns Adamo over Lawan. I mean, you, you, I'm sure that you've been following the story and the back and forth has been going on, uh, where you have Northern governors coming to say we're insisting on power shift to the south. And on the other hand, uh, the chairman announcing, even there's a lot of denial that, uh, you know, there's a consensus candidate, which the party is not in agreement. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, what is happening in the APC uh, has moved from the absorb to the bizarre, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Messi, you are as confused as I am this morning because even the party itself is so confused that you don't even know what is happening. Uh, it has been for, um, a question of um, everybody coming up with an opinion, maybe the ranks of the party, nobody is in charge. The president comes out to say, the chairman comes out to say another thing. The governors come uh, also um, add their opinions, and there are so many divisions going on. And the most absorbed of the whole uh, saga yesterday was when the national chairman of the party came out to say that uh, uh, one of the aspirants has been endorsed as the conservative candidate, and that is the senior president. 
uh, Ahmed Lawan. And that in itself brought a lot of um, Lebalu and all sorts of congestion everywhere, deniers, counter deniers here and there. Uh, to the extent that the Northern governors who initially have already said that they are for a shift of power to the South uh, came out to uh, condemn that and also that there was nothing um, of that nature. Members of the end of this, including the United Secretary of the Party, also came out to say that such was not discussed at the uh, end of this, that only, the chairman only came and told them that the Lawan has been picked. So, um, to add more uh, salt to the injury, uh, the president, through his aides, issued a statement yesterday that he has not endorsed anybody and that uh, every member uh, or every aspirant has the right to buy for the, the position. So, that is where we are as of this morning. So, uh, APC is going uh, into the primaries uh, this morning, more divided than it were. Uh, it has ever been right from 2015 when it's power competed. Don't forget that uh, APC is a bit of strange framework made up of um, CPC, the NPDP, the NPDP, Africa, and ACN. That was the, those are the parties that formed uh, 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 APC as it were. But today, and uh, through the early hours of tomorrow, we'll be able to know who the actual uh, candidate of the APC is going to be. But that is not where it's going to end because it's almost certain that uh, some nerves uh, and some egos will be bruised and they will have to do a lot of investigation uh, in order to bring everybody together uh, for the task ahead in 2023. PDP is a much better school now because they had theirs and they'll be able to resolve their issue. But let's see how this pans out today. All right, uh, still more reactions uh, uh, coming from Ondo State as regards that uh, Black Sunday. Um, this time around, the residents, uh, uh, or rather a survivor, recounting uh, the experience as captured in the Nation newspaper, uh, saying that um, the terrorists operated for 30 minutes at the old church, uh, according to the survivor. Um, what are your thoughts on, on, on this, this revelation, that they were there for 30 minutes shooting sporadically, uh, uh, you know, without, without any intervention whatsoever. And also some people criticizing the presidency for having a dinner um, uh, hours after this incident and uh, Buhari yet to visit the, the town, to even visit or to see the, uh, the, the survivors. Multi-dimensional question to put this morning. But um, let me take it from the uh, angle of... Um, the survivors and the recount of the survivors that the incident happened for over 30 minutes before any. And the question I ask is that where were the security agencies within or what? Because in every local government, you have additional police um, units. And apart from that, in each of the 774 local governments in Nigeria, you have the DSS, you have um, the uh, civil defense, and other uh, security agencies. Where we are there, when this was happening for over 30 minutes, close to 30 minutes, nobody came to their rescue. And these people were able to uh, engage and killed and slaughtered um, and shot people like cows and animals and went away on challenge. But that is the situation we, we find ourselves. This is not the first time it's happening. It has happened severally in the past. And as it, we've always had it. Let me tell you, Kofi, I'm missing that not will come out of it. It will always go like as if nothing happened. In fact, in the next few days, we see that we've forgotten this and we move, us, move on as a nation as if nothing is happening. That is the way we roll, that is the way we behave. Human life is no longer sacred. People no longer think, we, we, we now count the numbers and not just looking at it from the point that these are human beings, these are men, women, children, and relatives that have relatives. Um, but that is the situation. The police have not been able to come out with any state. They only they said that the persecution is ongoing. The governor of uh, Ondo State said that um, the perpetrators will be arrested. The president, as usual, issued his statement to his media aides, which he always, which they always do. All they do is just change the date and probably where the event uh, took place. It's the same um, uh, press release that we have. But to me, from the uh, from the feedback from some of the survivors and from the eyewitness accounts, it's obvious that those that perpetrated uh, perpetrated this evil, according to quote or no quote. 
are from the um, certain part of this country. And my question has always been that immediately we started that issue of allowing everybody from the West African region, especially from certain countries like Niger, Mali, and the rest of the country, into Nigeria, um, it, it become an issue. Don't forget that the prelate of Methodist Church, um, uh, Bishop uh, Uche, made a statement when he was um, arrested and was categorically categorical on his statement on the state of affairs concerning certain individuals and the rules they played in kidnapping him and the payment of 100 million ransom. That is all fortunate. This is the where we are. Nowhere is safe. South South is to be the safest place in the whole of Nigeria. It is also so obvious that um, it, 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 the narrative is about changing. Yeah, Chris, Chris can they want to? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Visiting uh, the vice president had visited the place yesterday. He is as good as the president. He's the representative of the president, and I don't think that should be an issue. All right. Uh, before before Bessie comes, just a quick follow up. Um, uh, you, you, you rightly looked at the uh, the um, ethnic uh, angle to this. Uh, a lot of people are also bringing it up, but some have argued that you know we, we're missing the point when we look at which part of the country that these people are from, because we do not even know who they are. Um, if if the, the the victims are given their own accounts and are, are saying what they say, you've talked about the West African subregion and the porosity or the porous nature rather of uh, of the borders, not just in Nigeria but even in 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 likes of Benin Republic, Cameroon, and even Ghana. Um, are we are we are we not making a mistake and losing the point if we begin to look at the ethnic makeup of this? Is the entire country not under attack? Um, that's the first question I have for up. The second one, are we now seeing terrorism uh, spread to the entire country? Bearing in mind the fact that there was an explosion there, which led some of the media houses to announce or report that an explosion occurred, and that led to death, only to get to update their stories. Indeed, some people came out to criticize them, but we confirmed there was an explosion. Secondly, uh, the fact that the police are saying that they recovered an unexploded bomb. Um, what does this say, say about the state of terrorism in Nigeria today? Kofi, um, I'm not profiling anybody. I'm not profiling any uh, ethnic group or whatever. The fact remains that from when most of these people have been arrested, when you profile them, it has always been obvious from their confessional statement and the rest of it. Personally, I should allow, we should allow the security agencies to do their job. They will come out with a report on what happened and we take it up from there. But I still repeat that the fact that we be, our, um, uh, our various borders have become so porous, and we have given a new way to everybody from especially from certain parts the West African region, or the countries of that. Um, don't forget that at a point we waived the issue of um, um, a Z visa or whatever. I know that within the West African region, you don't need a visa to enter any country. But there was some kind of waiver that was given some few uh, which allow as many people as possible from. West Africa to come into Nigeria. That to me is a big challenge, apart from the problem we're already having. Then on the issue of um, uh, whether or not uh, the, uh, these people can be held responsible or not, I don't know. I'm not a security person to say that again. But the, the, the problem now is that nowhere is safe. I said it and I repeat what the prelate of the Methodist said, and I totally believe him because I don't see him like it. That come from any other person, I wouldn't have believed that. He said that certain individuals said that they are already in certain forests in the southwest and they are ready to pounce on people and they are ready to attack. And just a week after that comment and that statement, there was this attack. So um, then the, the, the police and all security agencies, but the fact remains is that. We are into something that is much, much more dangerous than we always have. This has the, um, the, the roadmap of um, Boko Haram and rest. That is what they have been doing in the Northeast and the Northwest and the rest of them. To me, personally, I feel that they will be a part of, this could also be part of, of, of that um, group. Have they, have they infiltrated the Southwest? Only time will tell. Uh, let's get to the punch and look at the, the fact that you have uh, um, the National Assembly, I mean, protesting workers uh, shutting down and uh, the National Assembly and you have lawmakers saying that resumption would have to be, uh, you know, be on hold, postponing resumption. 
uh, for lawmakers. What are your thoughts? Now, these people are saying that if you have the, the, the lawmakers implementing or making policies whereby policies are formulated and you talk about those who would help in all of this, uh, you're looking at uh, those who are working, uh, they are not also being considered. Uh, what do you make of this back and forth with um, you know, the government at different levels where you have no respect for the memorandum of agreement that is always signed? But this is not the first time we are uh, seeing it. It has happened and it's still happening in other sectors. You remember at ASU, um, it's still on strike. Um, the work, uh, lecturers um, and the lecturers have not been able to uh, pin down this kind of uh, consensus and disagreement with the federal government. And the students have been at home in the past few months. Um, that has only been a distortion in agreements. And then um, ASU um, went on. When it strikes a few weeks back, they resume and they tend to go on strike. It becomes a massive media demand. Um, a, a union of local government did that some few. And so it's not just the first time we are seeing it. So the National Assembly, what is happening at the National Assembly is, is not different from what has happened. Here. But my own experience as a National Assembly is when you look at the, the huge sum of amounts being collected by our lawmakers every month, which they are not disclosing, millions and millions of naira. And you come to realize that their aides and also workers within the National Assembly um, are not even getting paid properly. And it, it leaves much to be desired. Uh, this, that reminds me, I don't know, uh, when I was, I'm 50, over 50 now. I don't know when you, whether you were to York in those days when, I was, when we grew up in Lagos. There used to be a place called Morocco, Morocco and Victoria Island. If you get to one, um, Victoria, Victoria Island stopped at 1004. All you are seeing now at Lake and the rest of them used to be Maroc. And you, when you are within that point, and you look at, you stay at 1004, and look further, you see how beautiful 1004 and this other area of Victoria Island looks. When you look further, and you see the darkness within Maroc, and it, that they don't have roads, they don't have good roads, they don't have water and the rest of them, you continue to ask yourself, ah, is this still the same Lagos and like we are studying? So the same thing is happening within the National Assembly. When you see some lawmakers, lawmakers Taking home huge amounts of money. Where are the dates? And don't forget, most of these law, these lawmakers don't do anything. They practically don't do anything. Everything that you see them present at the National Assembly, as a, as bill or uh, law passing through laws, are being put together by these aides. None of those lawmakers, they only go there and read those things. And the people that are helping you to do your job are not getting well paid. So I totally agree with the National Assembly workers. I hope that their class will be listened to and they'll get their dues. Because states are living within the next one year, this same set of lawmakers, over 70 to 60% of them will not return. And if these states don't get their dues, then that is the end of it. Mm. All right. Uh, uh, Chris Kane, a couple of papers have given some space to uh, the presidency versus Bolame Tinubu. Of course, um, his um, speech that has received a lot of um, shares on social media. Uh, where he said, uh, you know, he's the one that um, uh, made uh, President Buhari president. Of course, uh, it's his turn to be the next president. It's the turn of the year. But as the presidency has uh, replied to him, saying that he did not make uh, President Buhari president. In fact, I'll go to the Daily Independence version of this story. Uh, it, the headline is at the front page, top left corner of the front page of the Daily Independence. says, uh, you alone didn't make me president, Buhari replies Tinubu. Uh, this is barely hours after before the All Progressives uh, Congress National Convention, I think presidential primary should be said, kicks off in Abuja. The presidency responded to the outburst credited to former Lagos State Governor Bola Metinbu, insisting that he alone didn't facilitate uh, the victory of the president in 2015. Now, this is in a statement that's put out by Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity to the president, Gara Shehu. Uh, your thoughts on this. Is, this? is this going to really harm the party ahead of uh, uh, its decision on who should be its flag bearer? Opie, do you mean Amy Loko? Amy Loko. Yes, so <laughs> you're about Loko. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Amy Loko. Oshubulule, one. Oshubulule, two. Oshubulule, three. Oshubulule, four. That's it. <laughs> ah, it's a, Nigeria is just a funny state. But on the most serious note, um, the, yes, everybody watched that video. 
And uh, the low point for me wasn't even the statement uh, accredited to uh, the leader of the APC, Paul Ahmed Tulubu, concerning the president and how he made him bet. The degrading uh, uh, nature he referred to the governor of um, Obo State as Elei, if you are, if you, if you understand Yoruba very well, um, Elei means this one, and that to me was the height of it. Irrespective of, I think that um, it was a, a low for me coming from someone of Paul um, Ahmed Tinubu's status. But back to your question, um, yes, there is no saying, there is no saying the, the fact that Paul Ahmed Tinubu was uh, part of those that were instrumental to the success of the president in 2015. Don't forget that uh, he was able to rally his party, the ACM, to join with other forces to be able to uh, make sure that President Buhari won the 2015 election. To me, uh, he will always get that glory. But to now say he single-handedly made Buhari the president to me to, is, a, is a point of high fallacy. Because, don't forget that, that point, five PDP governors moved from PDP to um, APC. They were known as the NUDP. And they brought a lot to the fore. And there were also other individuals that also helped it. So, um, yes, uh, Bola Ahmed, Google's contribution, uh, without any question, it helped a lot. But to say that I made him president, for goodness sake, it's only God that makes president. It's only God that makes uh, uh, governor. It's only God. Irrespective of the fact that, yes, people will still vote. But if God has not said it that this is what we become, forget it. Kofi, Mercy, when you were born, God already knew that you are going to be broadcasters. What, what only happened is that your parents were able to have you and were able to train you in school and you moved towards that end. At the end of it, all, through your own personal effort, too, you now ended up where you are. Where you will be tomorrow, you don't know. It's only God that knows. So I don't like the way people impress so much power to themselves and throw arrogance to themselves that accept me, accept me. If there is no God, nothing will happen. But um, I saw the statement issued by Governor Smith yesterday. To me, I mean, totally in tandem with him. The president did not have come out outrightly to attack um, the person of all that men. They only tried to set the, um, uh, the issue right. Then to your question, whether it's going to affect the outcome of the primary today, I will tell you no. And uh, the delegates have already made up their mind who they want to vote for. Uh, the president said that they had an anointed son or a candidate. He told us a few months back, but it's so obvious that today he might be leaving to his name that I am for, for nobody and for everybody. So. Uh, to your tent, oh, is uh, everybody will go there and square it out. All our remains to get a contestant started by the APC failed uh, woefully, and it seems that it is going to four um, aspirants, except Kenny uh, Namida, uh, Naman that stepped down tomorrow. We are going to uh, contest, and we see this to the wire. And by the end of tomorrow, we are going to see the right candidate of the APC that will face the candidate of the PDP. Right. Uh, Chris can they want to yes before you go who's your money on sorry who is your money on is that should do what I didn't know who, 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 who is, is your, your money, money on? on I mean who, who are you who, betting on yeah to, to, to come up the flag yeah. bearer of the APC okay who am I betting on who am I betting on I you asking who I'm betting on yes who, who, who do you who are you putting the bet on uh, Kofi, I don't, I, I don't, I don't participate in. Uh, Messi, you don't Messi, gamble. Yeah, you Messi, you you spoil the matter for me. <laughs> All right. Of course. <laughs> Chris, I, I, Chris I, I, I want to ask you. You, you've successfully wriggled your way out of that question. <laughs> it's all right. There, there was no way. He was let, let the best for me. Well, well, I think I think we should call you Pastor Chris this morning. You know, for for preaching to us and telling us that God knew. Uh, who we would be before even <laughs> we were born. Uh, Pastor Chris Kende Wandu, thank you very much for your time. Shadow mediator and conciliator, we appreciate your analysis on Of The Press today. Thank you very much. Do have a wonderful day ahead. Well, that's the size of our conversation this morning on Of The Press. We'll take a break now. When we return, we'll be looking at the first major conversation. But just before that time, let's tell you what happened today being the 7th of June in history. Stay with us.